Hello, it's me again, Mike. Um, I am a big music fan, or rather a big 60s, 70s and I guess 80s music fan. I'm old enough to remember seeing Jimi Hendrix at the Royal Albert Hall in 1967 and indeed I saw the Pink Floyd when they had Sid Barrett uh, playing with them. Now, I know some of you won't have a clue who they are, but they were legends in their time. And I'm even old enough to have seen the Beatles in 1964 at the ABC Cinema in Exeter, as well as the Rolling Stones, and the list goes on and on. However, there's one band I haven't seen, but I did like very much, an American band called The Birds. Now, I know some of you will know them, others won't have a clue who I'm talking about. They had two outstanding musicians, singers, in um, Dave Crosby, who went on to form a band called um, Crosby, Stills and Nash and Young, and a guy called Roger McGuinn. There's Roger McGuinn I want to talk about a little bit for the moment. I was just musing on this this morning. And... Roger became a Christian, I think, in the late 80s, early 90s, and he's still a big wheel in the evangelical churches in, um, where is it, West, the West Coast, yeah. Um, now, I like a lot of the bird stuff, but Roger went on to actually, Roger McGuinn went on to form, uh, to do solo acts and so on and so forth. And I did see him in, in Leeds at City Varieties in 1995, I think. Um, and it was absolutely tremendous. But there's one song that really stood out for me. And it's actually not an original bird song or even uh, they used to sing a lot of Bob Dylan songs. Um, it is actually an Irish blessing. And I play it over and over again because I absolutely love it. And I'll just quote the verse to you because this means so much to me. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine upon your land. May the rain fall soft upon your face until we meet again. And may God hold you in the palm of his hand. The very idea of that blessing of God holding you gently in his hand, supporting you, loving you. That really stands out for me and it means so much to me in my own life, which I'll talk about some other time perhaps. But the thing about Roger McGuinn is that actually his name is, uh, he was born Jim McGuinn. And there's a rather funny story of how he changed his name or how it developed into Roger McGuinn. But suffice it to say that basically the reason he chose Roger was because he was very keen on um, at that, that time uh, space stuff and uh, all that kind of technology flying and so on and so forth. And of course, um, there's lots of things beginning with R, rocket and so on and so forth that really sort of speak of that time. But he chose Roger because it's Roger and out. You know, that's the course, oh, the end of a call sign, as it were. And uh, so he changed his name to Roger and then subsequently went to live in Rio for a bit and then came back um, to, to the States. And it got me thinking about changing of names and in the Bible, there are lots of names that are changed. Uh, God changes or other people that Nebuchadnezzar changed the name of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, of course, uh, from their original names. Um, but uh, when God does it, it really establishes a new identity and purpose that God wants the user to embody. And we think of, for example, Abraham. His original name was Abraham meaning exalted father, became Abraham, father of a multitude. His wife, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah originally the Sare, or however you pronounce it, was princely, changed to Sarah, queen of princes. Saul was changed to Paul, 
Saul meaning asked for, prayed for, Paul meaning little or small. And Paul often talked about his, he being the least of the apostles and the least of this, that and the other. Jacob changed to Israel. Jacob, a cheater, a deceiver, his name was deceiver. How about Hosea, meaning salvation, his name by Mo, changed by Moses to Joshua, Jehovah saves. And of course, Simon changed to Peter or Cephas, meaning rock, although in Aramaic apparently it means stone, just a stone. It seems as if God changes these names, and in particular in, in the New Testament, Simon and if you like, and Paul, uh, or Peter and Paul, they basically, their names were changed to actually put them in the right place before God, a small stone, or if you like, little and small, as far as Paul is concerned. And apparently that was quite common in the old uh, times for names to be changed to describe um, a person, a character, and so on and so forth, or what they did. And if you like, our surnames are often derived from uh, what our uh, ancestors did. My name, Heal, apparently means Thatcher. That's a West Country name, uh, apparently. Um, so I'm told, I may be wrong on that, but that's what I've been told and I'll, I'll stick to that. But these days we don't tend to change names and we define ourselves, a purpose and goal, if you like, in life is often described by what we do. I'm an engineer. I was known as the engineer Michael, as opposed to a certain preacher Michael or a certain um, home group co um, coordinator Michael. Um, we were, you know, we're given the name that describes what we do. Now, I wondered about that and thought about that. I, I kind of understand that. But if that's all it is, then it really is a bit meaningless. Um, I, I just want to leave you with one thought today. And that is that basically, um, I want to be known by character. And I just want to give you one verse, and I'm going to leave it at that. And this is where I personally, and I hope you too, are aiming. It's Galatians 5, 22 to 23, very well known. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. That is the character I want to build, and that's what I want to be known by. I trust you do too. That's all I've got to say today. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.